All right. Welcome, everyone, to the Yogic Studies podcast. This is episode 31. Today, I am joined by Dr. Rajiv Ranjan, who is professor of Hindi and Urdu at Michigan State University. He's the author of the open education resource Hindi textbook, Basic Hindi One. And he is the new instructor of Hindi here at Yogic Studies. Rajiv Ji, welcome to the Yogic Studies podcast. It's wonderful to have you here today. Yeah. Namaste, Seth Ji. It's nice to be with you and talking to you and our audience. Yes. Uh, we're, we're really thrilled to have you here on the podcast and to be teaching Hindi. This is an exciting new venture for us at Yogic Studies. We've been doing Sanskrit for a couple of years um, and based on student interest and where our curriculum and program is, has been moving, we really wanted to expand and to to move into other languages. And Hindi just seemed the obvious and natural kind of next step for us. And to bring, bring a modern language, a spoken language. And I look forward to, to getting into all of that with you and learning about your background and, and talking all things Hindi. Um, yeah. As we get started, where, where are you uh, coming from today? I'm here in Northern California, beautiful spring day. Uh, where are you today? I'm in East from? Lansing, uh, Michigan. Um, today is a sunny day. Typically, we don't get that much of a sunny day in mid Midwest or specifically in Michigan, but today is a beautiful day. Wonderful. Good day and, to uh, chat. <laughs> uh, where are you at in the, in the semester there at MSU? Yeah, we're what are you, what are you finishing teaching? our semester. And what are you teaching this semester? Oh, I taught Hindi and Urdu and, uh, you know, uh, uh, foreign language teaching method course. So uh, for all the foreign language teachers, school teachers, basically, and uh, we do courses for them for their master's program so that school teachers also get some uh, foreign language teaching method course or theory or second language acquisition theory and stuff so that they can also promote their career further. Mm. And uh, you're teaching in person, I imagine, this semester? Yeah, in person in uh, uh, this semester, but the, the graduate course are, is the part of the online program that we do so that students are from all over country or international students, and we do it um, synchronously or asynchronously online. Yeah, it's been a very strange and interesting experiment for teachers all over the world, people who never yeah. thought they'd be teaching online before pandemic changed everything everything yeah. online most yeah. people probably can't couldn't wait to get back into the classroom but we learned a lot right and there's some things that 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 translate really well online and i think language yeah. learning is one yeah. of them it's not it's not a perfect medium mm -hmm. there's things mm -hmm. we lose right but there's a lot that we gain as well i agree and and me in per personally i have been teaching online before pandemic so mm -hmm. Uh, for many teachers, my colleagues, my friends all around the world, they have challenges teaching online. Um, but it was a smooth sell because I, I, I had experience of teaching online courses. Um, however, that said, language teaching online and specifically a language like Sanskrit or, or Hindi or any language which does not share the Roman script would be a little bit of a challenge because the technology is built for English <laughs> mm. language. So, um, but then again, as you said, said um, we have a great opportunity and many new doors opened up because of this online thing that we didn't even think before we explored the online. All right. Well, before we get too into teaching online and, and the upcoming Hindi course and all of that, uh, let's learn a little bit more about Rajiv. Uh, how did you get to Michigan State University and now yogic studies? You, you, you've you had a long journey. Uh, so take us back. Tell us a little bit about your background uh, growing up in India and early education and, and so on. So uh, now um, I'm from Jharkhand, which was, uh, it's hard to say for me because when I hit teenage, Bihar and Jharkhand was one state. So I always introduce myself from that I'm from Bihar. Um, but now as Jhar the place where I'm from is now the part of uh, another state, Jharkhand. Uh, my early education, uh, we belonged to a very rural 
part of Jharkhand, not just even the urban Jharkhand, the rural Jharkhand, that still, if you go there, there's nothing but land and forest. And, and this is and, in, uh, in northern India. Yeah, in northern India, the next to Bihar um, and Bengal. Um, still, there is no road. There is no electricity in, in that part of the country. I When I go back to India, I visit my uh, ancestor or native um, birthplace but then my there's father no, there's no electricity where you grew not up? yet there's no road and electricity yet we still walk or um, typically walk i remember my childhood when i would ride a horse with my grandfather to go one place to the other after like maybe 20 kilometer or 12 13 miles then you would have access to the uh, roads and, and stuff so wow that, yeah and um uh, I, my primary school, I was under the tree uh, with my plastic sack and we'll put it on the floor and we'll read and with the tons of goats. And if you're solving a maths problem and if goat ran in someone's field, I'll have to go chase them back. Um, I didn't see the real school till my sixth grade when my father um, moved out from that rural part and became a truck driver and brought a family uh, and a large family my father has four brothers and five sisters, and he was the only one who was earning. Mm. Um, so uh, when I went to school first time, I saw four walls and I felt suffocation because, you know, I never had that experience. And then um, moving fast forward, I got introduced to English language. <laughs> okay. I started with A for apple and B for ball sort mm -hmm. of education system in India. And in eighth grade, I was put in an English medium school that I repeated. So I was an eighth grade student, but I knew everything, but I didn't know things to say in English. And after five years, uh, English attracted me a lot. Uh, call it a, a language of prestige in India or everybody around you is telling like, if you don't speak English, then you have no future, no career. Uh, and, and language itself attracted me. And then I thought, okay, I'm gonna do, I'm the first person in my entire family who could reach to the college. Uh, now I have a younger brother and sisters. They're all educated in PhD and whatnot. But oh, really? They I followed, was, yeah, they so, followed <laughs> in your path. Yeah. And I had nobody to even guide me what to do and what the English um, undergraduate degree in English would look like. So I went in my first class of my undergraduate degree with the English major and I had to read William Shakespeare. So in five years from A for Apple and B for Ball, I had to read William Shakespeare Macbeth. Wow, which is tough even for, you know, an American or, you know, <laughs> yeah. an English, you know, student. Yeah, so I struggled three years, wrote memorized answers and tried to get through that. But that three years of my undergraduate degree in India, we have three at that time, still in many universities, there are only three years of undergraduate degree, unlike American university where we have f four years of uh, undergraduate degree. Mm. And I, I quickly realized that no matter how good I'm going to be in, in English literature, my English is not going to be like native speaker and I am not going to be a poet or a writer. I'm not a wordsmith. Um, mm. But that, that last year of my English literature introduced me to the world of linguistics. And, uh, uh, and then I wanted to do master's degree in linguistics. And there is no college or university in that part of India which offers linguistics. Um, so I applied for outside the state, uh, UP. I applied for Banaras Hindu University, Jawaharlal Nehru University in Delhi, mm -hmm. and Delhi University. Those and are some of I, the major universities, right? Yes, in, in and they had a master's degree in linguistics. And then um, I got accepted uh, two places, Univers uh, University of Delhi and um, Banaras Hindu University, but I did not get accepted in JNU, mm. uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University. So... I, I decided to go to Delhi. I did. I joined the University of Delhi for my master's in linguistics. And that opened up further door. And then I learned that, oh, actually, the very good institution for linguistics is in Hyderabad. Hmm. Um, that time it was called CIEFL, Central Institute of English and Foreign Languages. Now it's called English and Foreign Languages University. IFLU, uh, it has campus in Hyderabad, Lucknow, and Ceylon. So I did my MPhil degree. Uh, at uh, at Iflu in Hyderabad, and after my MPhil degree, I had a friend from Kashmir who applied for Fulbright, 
uh, FLTA, Fulbright Language Teaching Assistant. And I, I, you know, that, that's how I'm growing. You know, everything coming from the people I'm around, my friends or teachers. And I said, I want to apply for that too. And he said, yeah, why not? And he helped me to, you know, access the application and guided me. I'm forever grateful to him. But then I got into the Fulbright program and I came to University of Iowa. Wow. Um, yeah, in 2010. And I met my, uh, Alice Davison, whose work I read a lot because my MPhil degree was on descriptive analysis of ergative case in Hindi, which is in Hindi, we have name marking. So I, I studied a lot. And Alice Davison was the one person that I was familiar with, not by person, but by her work. work. And uh, I was I took her courses. I got so lucky to be with her. And uh, uh, and then I applied for a PhD program in linguistics. And again, um, they said, you have to do master's. And with master's, the funding is not secure. So even though you had uh, already had at least... MPhil degree. One, MPhil. Yeah. Did you have another master's before? Yeah, MPhil is a master of philosophy, which is like a very British style of education system yeah. that in India we still have, that after your master's, you can't get into the PhD. You have to do another short degree, which is called MPhil, master yeah. of philosophy. Um, so I... Uh, and they said no funding, and I had, you know, um, uh, no money from coming from a very humble background. Um, so I applied for applied linguistics because in that year, teaching Hindi in America as a Fulbright also showed me or opened a new door for like teaching Hindi as a foreign language or as a second language that I never thought of uh, in India. And I thought now I know a little bit of linguistics and Hindi is my second language already because my native language is Maghi, which no one's mother tongue is Hindi. Everybody speaks different dialect or variety in India, and we can talk more about that, the whole politics of dialects and yeah. and, and, and standard, what's called language and what's called dialect. Say um, again, but, say again, yeah. what is what is your mother tongue? Magahi. Magahi, yeah. which is specific uh, to from Northeast Magad. India. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but, you know, Bhojpuri, Mathali, these languages yeah. are called the dialect. Now they are called language, but Magahi is still struggling. So my favorite definition of uh, dialect or a language is that every dialect is a language with an army behind it. You know, some sociolinguist has said this definition and it really hits so honest to me because if we have enough manpower, we can make make Magahi as a, as an, another language. Anywho, anyhow, uh, moving forward, I got accepted in SLA program at University of Iowa and I was supervised with Alice Davison as my co-supervisor and Paula Kimchinsky, who was uh, SLA scholar and Spanish syntactician, and 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 I had a blessing from uh, Dr. Philip Lutkendorf, who is um, a great scholar of uh, Indian religion. His work on Ramayana and mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. uh, he was it, linguistics was not one of his <laughs> favorite area, but he 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 is my father figure in many ways. He taught me everything. And uh, he guided me at every stages um, in my life. And then in my fifth year of my PhD, I was writing a dissertation again on second language acquisition, uh, acquisition of forgative case by L2 Hindi Urdu learners. Again, in, in common language, the, the uh, learning of name marking in Hindi. And I wanted to explore um, that how a learner with L1 English would acquire that name marking, which has no meaning. So the bigger picture that I explored in my PhD is how uh, language acquisition happens to those linguistic features in any language you take, right? Which has no meaning. It's just there for grammatical reasons. It has, if you drop that 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 marking, uh, if I say, uh, set, drink coffee, mm -hmm. you understood what I said, but I'm ungrammatical. I should say, set, drinks coffee, right? So that S, if that's, does not have any contribution to the meaning of that sentence, mm. how would a learner of English would learn that marking? What would compute that in a, in a developmental process that at when and at what point of time? So those are the bigger picture, but the one item that I can showcase to explore that process is, is ergative case in Hindi. 
And in my fifth year, uh, I um, was in a conference and the job offer came, a job advertisement came from MSU and I applied and I got the job. So first year I was teaching Hindi and I was to write my dissertation. Mm. Um, 2015, I joined here at MSU and then 2016, I had my PhD. And since then, I'm here teaching Hindi Urdu and making some sense of my life and mm -hmm. and trying to teach Hindi Urdu to all my wonderful students at MSU. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was that, that is an incredible journey. You know, <laughs> it is from, when, from I, when I riding horses back in the village with your grandfather. Yeah, and and then everything that you've done and accomplished to to yeah. to be where you are today. It's impressive. Yeah. And I think one of the things that Thank strikes you. me the most though about you, Rajiv, is just your positivity and uh, you know, and I, kindness and warmth, you know, that comes yeah. through as well. Yeah. And I'm sure your students, you know, feel that from your your yeah. passion for for sharing this language uh, mm -hmm. and culture uh, with yeah. them. Uh, well, since you you've been busy though, you haven't stopped. You know, since you've gotten to MSU, you finished the PhD, and then you decided to write a textbook. Yeah, uh, basic Hindi one, which we're really excited. I mean, that was one of the reasons among mm -hmm. many I was excited to have you come on. Is mm -hmm. uh, I think I saw there was an email on the Risa list serve, a professional list serve for scholars mm -hmm. of of South Asia. It was funny because I had just sent a couple notes to colleagues here at Yogic Studies saying we were looking for a Hindi teacher, and I think like that day there was this email that popped up. People were asking for resources for Hindi teaching, wow. and there was your name right there. And uh, so I jotted that down, and and then uh, yeah, looked at this textbook that you created, and it's it's really impressive. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the genesis of of this textbook, yeah. why you decided uh, you made a kind of non conventional decision, one that will benefit us greatly, uh, to make it. Um, open access and online available to educators anywhere rather than like a traditional, you know, hard print physical textbook. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So tell us a little bit about that project. And Yeah. Thank you so much though. Uh, um, I, I had the, when I was thinking about myself and like, how do I contribute more to the academic world, which makes more sense because you write a research paper and only researchers should read. Yeah. But when you are in an applied linguistics field, when you are teaching language, you have a student community and also a teacher's community at the college level, at the, you know, communities, colleges, at the university and even community school or independent learner, like somebody wants to learn. And, uh, uh, the research work on a Hindi as a second language or as a foreign language is 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 next to nothing in in many ways. I mean, there is a research on the Indian languages, but very deep theoretical analysis of sentence structure or morphology and whatnot. But when it comes to the language acquisition, it has less of a material. Uh, compared to, let's say, commonly taught languages, for example, Spanish or for French or German. And as a trained, uh, as I received training in second language acquisition, but also I identify myself as not just a, a somebody who has a research background, but also all these 12 years I have been teaching in, in class experience. And the previous textbooks have done a great job. I am I'm so um, kind of, I, I think the scholars, those who wrote previous textbooks were, had done the amazing job that help, helped us learn and teach. Uh, so credit goes to them, but, but applied linguistics or language teaching is such a dynamic field that it changes. The, if you think about that, our first, second world war, we were still using grammar translation method. Post second world war, we learned that, oh, audio lingual method is better. After that, when the people to people contact happened, in a, I'm just giving a chronology that how the politics and the world politics changes the pedagogy of language teaching. And then, then we thought uh, like, yeah. 2020 yeah. pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then pandemic happened, you know, that so all marker. these things has has effect and uh, so i wanted to create something which is not kind of forgetting the traditional stuff but also adding new stuff right and 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 recognizing the fact that this will keep changing what is the platform where i can have the book uh for where i have access to 
keep changing things. So that oh. was the main motivation of making it o- o- OER, where if the pedagogy or some new ideas came in, I can still weave in. I don't have to go to the publishers and, and spend uh, dollar amounts to kind of republish the book. And and less commonly taught languages in America, like Hindi, Urdu, and, and Persian, and, and tons of other languages, the, this could be a motivation for people to learn because, you know, it, education is really expensive here. If students have to decide to buy a textbook or buy food, they are going to buy food. So if they have a chance to learn Hindi with the no textbook cost, uh, that would help. And then pandemic hit. So everybody is trying to scan the chapter and put it on their language management system. And that time, this book became another sort of blessings that you can have that book online. And, uh, you know, the school in, in American school, they teach commonly taught languages, which has lots of amazing interactive material. But when they come to the university or college level, they, they have access to learning these uh, less commonly taught languages but the material is not as as close in competition with the material that are available for commonly taught languages so a student might not find it more attractive and and kind of engaging so i thought to create a book where independent learners can engage and interact with the book itself if that person have access to native speakers or near native speakers they can also use that help or also teachers with their different teaching philosophy, they can uh, teach the language as they wish to to be. Because as an author of that book, I did not want to dictate my teaching philosophy. That's the idea of openness, right? It's open. Everything is there. It's open mm-hmm. for you. You can adopt it. You can change it. You can use whatever you want. You know, it's out there. So I think I took it as a service, not as something that I wanted money for or, or anything, you know, I, I did it as, as, a, as a student of uh, second language acquisition and as a servant of Hindi and less commonly taught languages. Beautiful. Yeah. And I, I, I like the idea of the textbook as this living document that can, that can change and adapt to different environments and students and teachers, you know. Yeah. And it will adapt because we're going to use it in a totally different environment, you know, in these sure. online courses, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so at at Michigan State University, uh, you don't just teach Hindi; uh, you teach Hindi Urdu, yeah, uh, combined. Uh, likewise, at Harvard, I where I, I took a couple years of study, they also teach Hindi Urdu together. Um, some institutions teach those separately, or or, or not at all. Yeah. Uh, t- talk to us a little bit about that, um, about that approach to studying yeah. the, this this sort of paralleled, you know, languages, joint features of these languages. Where are they the same? How do they differ? Mm-hmm. If you want to even dip your toes into, you know, I know today there's a lot of politics involved in this question. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So when I when I think about the politics of Hindi Urdu, I wanna excuse myself not to talk about the politics of it. Please, but as yeah. as as a linguistic student, as a student of linguistics, and as a language teacher, I would emphasize more on the the linguistic feature of uh, Hindi Urdu compare uh, in in contrast to the politics behind it or uh, whatever happening out there in the the real world. I live in the linguistics world, so <laughs> that, that I can I I can talk more. Um, Hindi Urdu, um, when I came to America as a Hindi Fulbright language teaching assistant, and uh, I saw how things are in American universities, and I spoke Urdu. I, I listened hours and hours of Ghazal and Mirza Ghalib in Hindi script uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> or on a, on by Jagjit Singh, uh, oh, yeah. tons of audio and videos and CDs and whatnot. But I never had the, the skill of reading and writing. So Nastalik was uh, alien to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I took, uh, I got a scholarship to go to AISS, American Institute of Indian Studies, um, mm. as a graduate student. And I went to study abroad in my own country. How funny is that, <laughs> right? So, Did you go to Lucknow? Did you do yes, the Urdu so program? I, yes, so That's I was... Funny. Uh, that must I have was, been a funny yeah, experience because so, you're, you're going with all these Americans who are yeah. going to India maybe for the first time and you're coming home. 
yeah, but but on a paper, I was studying abroad. <laughs> you were, you were. Uh, and right. I'm sure so, the new, a new environment, though, I'm sure. Yes, yes. And I had pleasure and an opportunity to learn Urdu script. As soon yeah. as I picked up the script, I was in a very advanced class oh, yeah. <laughs> at yes. AIS. Um, and then 2015, I collected my PhD data from Hindi Urdu uh, students. So I had an opportunity to kind of brush my Hin- Urdu script too. But when I got a job and, and the situation in currently in America even, and especially for less commonly taught languages, people are cutting due to budget cut or whatever the where the world is going. But the reality is that we do not have enough support or as much as the other languages would get support, right? So um, you also have to, in a professional world, you have to, you have to market yourself in many ways. And I think like if I can teach two languages at the cost of one teacher uh, yes. or you can write in your CV as a student that you know two languages at the cost of one course you know that would be amazing and as you can see now my book and my Hindi Urdu is everything thinking more things for free <laughs> you know <laughs> it's cost effectiveness but then I started um Hindi and Urdu in one course and I see that there is a little bit of a tension in the community at large like if you advertise a course with Hindi and Rajiv Ranjan yay but if you advertise a course Urdu with Rajiv Ranjan yeah, who, Rajiv Ranjan sounds like an Indian name what right. does he know about Urdu because the doctors and engineers and community people out there in America even they don't have this linguistic uh, background to because they relate Hindi to India and Urdu to Pakistan. Right. Right. Um, and, and that's the politics that I, I had to um, not deal with, but that's what also not kind of getting my enrollment high. So what I decided to separate them in the first year. And as the student, I would teach them, I would give them a flavor in the first year Hindi, like, look, this is a Urdu word. In Urdu class, I'll say, look, this is a Hindi word. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in a semester or two, they are ready and they understand that basically it's the same language. And then you put them together in the second, third and fourth year level um, so that. In the first year, they work on the different script, and 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 when they come to in, together in second year, third year, and fourth year, you can pick up uh, some material which are written in Hindi and Urdu script, but they are using the same language. Uh, so Hindi Urdu at the spoken level, at the very day to days level, is the same language with identical grammar. Mm-hmm. Uh, grammar is more uh, like a, grammar is exactly the same at the vocabulary level. It can differ. But um, but where does the vocabulary come? Those different vocabulary comes at the very high level when um, you are talking about something in the fourth year and you're talking about uh, some religious text uh, in both stream, right? Mm-hmm. Or you are reading someone who is trying to bring the cultural, sociocultural aspect to the to to the language material. That's where the 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 vocabulary. Uh, goes more towards Arabic and Persian for Urdu and right. Sanskritized in, in Hindi. But as a teacher at the university level, I can decide the text that we want to read. And those texts are like Premchan yeah. uh, for Hindi student, right? Who uses lots of Urdu. He actually wrote, started writing in Nastalik and then he changed and then he writes in Hindi. But um, Toba, uh, sorry, Sadat Hasan Manto, those are the very relevant uh, kind of topic to that they write their you know uh, stories and stuff and it does not there's no con- conflict on on that and then for listening and stuff you can watch videos from you know Pakistani TV or or Hindustani TV and when they are or Bollywood movie everything uh, if you watch Bollywood uh, movie you nobody can touch the cross the heart and say like this is a Hindi or Urdu you know right. <laughs> Right, because so it's, spoken. it's a Hindustani. Yeah, Hindustani. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and so that's what I teach. <laughs> and, the, and the guzzles, as you mentioned, you yeah. Know, if anything, Bollywood might be more Urdu <laughs> in some in, it, in some yeah. genres. Yeah, I mean, there is no Hindi, no Urdu. Hindi Urdu is a terminology of a language that we speak in South Asia, given by political reasons, I guess. I mean, I'm, I don't know politics, but this is just one blind thing that I'm going to say. Yeah. 
Yeah, but as you said, so so on the spoken day to day level, as spoken conversational languages, mm -hmm. uh, they're they're virtually the same, but it's at yeah. the higher registers when you yeah. get into more philosophy, religious poetry. Mm -hmm. It's fair to say the Hindi is going to draw more on the Sanskritic and yeah. Hindu kind of dharmic world and those yeah. idioms and technical yeah. terms. And mm -hmm. the Urdu maybe more on the Persia, yeah. Arabic, Islamic, yeah. you yeah. know. And, and if I can add, this is not a desperate attempt to make the higher, uh, like the literature going towards Arabic and Persian or Hindi literature going towards the Sanskrit. It's not the poet who is desperately or writer who is desperately doing it. It's the demand of the text itself. Like if you're writing about, you know, Mahabharata, or, or yeah. you know, something in, in Urdu, the, the text itself, the material itself demands you that register, that vocabulary, right? So it's not that some author or some writer in the current time is trying to be more Urdu uh, personalized and Arabicized or Sanskritized. If the text, the topic is such that if we start talking about, let's say, uh, a, a topic about the, the Ramayana today, then there's a bit of vocabulary that we need from those Sanskrit texts, right? Yeah. Uh, or more Sanskrit texts. Yeah, and the benefit of learning in this way for the student, as you said, is they basically get two languages for the price of one. One. Which is pretty great. Yeah. On the other side, I know from my own experience as a student, it was, it was difficult to to be moving back and forth between those two scripts in the beginning. Um, and partly because I didn't apply myself the way I needed to with the Urdu. It was always this obstacle that had yeah. to be, you know, dealt with and oftentimes neglected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh, it, it was challenging in that way. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I thought about when we when we began thinking about developing this online program, do we do Hindi Urdu? Mm -hmm. uh, because it was familiar to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought, well, if there's demand for Urdu, we could we could just add that later. You know, we could yeah. we could have a seminar and add Nastalik mm -hmm. and add the script and then and, and, mm -hmm. and deal with that. But I think in the yeah. beginning for, for this community and audience, um which is more Sanskritic and is, you yeah. know, rooted in the yoga traditions, mm -hmm. the type of Hindi that folks might be in general, but we have students of all walks yeah. of life and from yeah. all over, so I don't yeah. want to generalize. Yeah. Uh, but I thought, well, for, for many of them, they find Dave and Agari hard enough, and so let's not yeah. throw two foreign scripts <laughs> at them at once. Yeah, uh, I, I agree, and that's why it's beneficial for a student to come from the two different stream, and I'm not asking them to read in a cross script they in the second third year they are reading in their own script yeah. but they are reading the same material right uh, and uh, benefit is also for learning two languages at at these days the people for example i can give you a couple of example and i have a couple of students those who are very successful in both script now and and they love it um like these days in hindi script we are forgetting the nuktas the the dot under k or j you know mm. so in hindi we do not have the sound right yeah. we have j but when you read the urdu script and you are saying the word right like javed is j not za mm -hmm. right so so those are the things that when the hindi student get introduced to the urdu script at the fourth year and at the fourth year third fourth year i ask them to learn that so urdu student would learn the nagri script and nagri yes. student and then it learn. becomes important the, because yeah. you're going to encounter that za and you think where yeah. did this come from <laughs> yeah so uh, or or for example the funny word was am so in hindi we say am torpor Right. And you will see that arm sounds perfectly like a mango. But how does arm also means common? Commonly, arm tor par hum kya baat karte hai class mein, right? So something like mm. that. And then when you learn the nastalik, then you will learn that mango is written with alif and an arm for common, arm tor par is written with ain. So it's a different later altogether. Oh. So then I'll go, oh my God, I never knew that. It's not mango on the mango version of it. You know? So <laughs> Aam Admi Party is, is, is not mango people, but it's a common people. You know? so, <laughs> so those fun things happen in Hindi Urdu world too. Uh, mangoes are for the common people too. Yeah, mangoes are for common. 
Ah, uh, okay. Well, so okay, so we talked. That was Hindi Urdu, um, which of course just scratching the surface. More to say about all of that. Yeah. But uh, we mentioned the relationship between Sanskrit and Hindi. Tell us a little bit more of that because. Uh, like I said, you know, we've been doing Sanskrit here, yogic studies now for the last two years, uh, and many, many, but not all of our audience coming from that more Sanskritic and yoga world. So, tell us a little bit about you know how to understand what is the relationship between Hindi and Sanskrit. Yeah. So um, I would say, like the chronologically speaking, Sanskrit is the mother of Hindi. You know. Uh, so uh, there is a mother and daughter relationship between Sanskrit and and Hindi. Even current Hindi, there is also a relation between Sanskrit and Urdu because the landscape where these languages were born were had the Sanskrit as the previous language, right? So Prakrit, Abhansa, Khadiboli, and then it becomes like then the 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 Persian came language came in contact with whatever language that we used to speak in that landscape. Call it a Pransa or Khari Boli, mm -hmm. and and gave a, a more vocabulary, right? So so the idea is that you have a language which is kind of becoming simpler <laughs> and became a Khari Boli, mm -hmm. and it is so living and alive that and it doesn't get threatened to adopt the vocabulary from the other language that is coming in contact with right um so we learned got the word from portuguese and arabic and persian right so so all together the language itself is so vibrant but then the trace back to the to the grammar portion or the indo-aryan as a language family it's i would say the best way i could define the relationship between sanskrit and hindi is um, is the mother and daughter relationship. And if you learn Hindi, let's say that somebody started at yogic study, somebody studied uh, Sanskrit and want to learn Hindi, you would not believe that the life of that person would be so simpler. A, you know the script. <laughs> B, you know, uh, B, you have more Sanskritized sort of vocabulary that not every day yeah. Hindi native speaker would know those words. And and uh, people like I can give you example like um ye bhavan bahut sundar hai. Mm -hmm. Right. The bhavan uh, you know or so bhavan is is not every day Hindi speaker would say the word bhavan. The building bahut sundar hai na? building ya, ya makan ya imarat whatever but bhavan bahut sundar matlab haan. matlab haan. kya hai sundar matlab kya hai oh beautiful <laughs> this 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 bhavan this building is beautiful right so um i i I think it, it would benefit the Sanskrit learners to kind of learn the Hindi because of the Sanskrit background. But mm. let's say somebody learned Hindi and wants to learn Sanskrit. That is another benefit because you have learned so many, uh, you know. Um, well, again, you already know the script. You know, the so script you're coming and in the vocabulary. Because the script, the, the alphabet, Devanagari, yeah. virtually the same. A couple extra yeah. characters in Hindi, right? Yeah. Yeah, and and you know the 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 pronunciation because Sanskrit and Hindi and Urdu these are completely phonetic language that you exactly speak the the sound that you write and read. So there's no hidden or you know like uh, I always give this example to student the word knowledge in English. You know, if a Hindi learner or Hindi speaker who doesn't know English can read it Kanwalet gay. So, but it's not Kanwalet gay. It's knowledge. <laughs> that sort of quirkiness is not there in Hindi or say Urdu it, or say Sanskrit. Say that again. Kanwa led gay. K N O W K N O L E D G E. Kanwa led gay. But right. this is yeah. But uh, but in Hindi, Urdu, or Sanskrit, you don't have that problem. You don't. There's a one to one correlation, right? Yeah. Between the and you have more vowel sounds to open and and the sound. <laughs> Yeah, and do some facial yoga by learning Hindi uh, or, or Sanskrit because it, it, it the sound with all the spectrum of the rounded to unrounded vowel sounds and every sound has to be uttered clearly and openly. Yeah. I think that it gives a little bit of a facial yoga that you can do by learning this language. Yeah, no, I always feel terrible for English language learners for second or third language because like, yeah, there's... You just have to know that it's yeah. knowledge, not kanalig, kanalig gay. Kanwa led gay, right? <laughs> or guli guli, like the Google, like Google-y or Google-y. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you so, don't have that problem with both Sanskrit no, and no. Hindi. If you know the if you know the character, you know the sound. Yeah. And it's not going to trick you. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 even uh, for the linguistic feature, uh, some you know like there is uh, Sanskrit has three gender or, or you know, but uh, Hindi has two gender, but the gender uh, the the grammatical gender uh, kind of comes down to the pulling and strilling. Uh, Ubhaling, we got rid of in in, yeah. in Hindi. Uh, That's interesting, actually. Time. Why is that? Because you you you're talking about the simplification of the yeah. language. So the neuter, yeah. you know, they thought yeah. we'll just make yeah. that masculine or something like that. Yeah, and and currently I'm involved with the with the friend who is trying to get the the in Hindi the non-binary gender marking mm -hmm. and we are thinking about tho and ho and and mm. uh, we are working like somebody who doesn't identify as a male or a female in american university and if they are learning hindi then that person has to choose right and right. if we are trying to be more inclusive and you know uh, sanskrit is more inclusive in that way in that way sanskrit is more inclusive yeah, yeah. so yeah we were talking about that with varun kana in spoken sanskrit you know mm -hmm. where where that neuter noun can actually yeah. play a role there in, in the, yeah. these modern to contemporary conversations about gender mm -hmm. yeah um of course grammatical gender is not necessarily biological uh, yeah. gender you know yeah. but but it can it can be adapted perhaps so yeah, yeah. that's that's interesting yeah and then of course yeah. yeah the vocabulary though i know you know when i studied hindi i it was always so exciting when i already knew a word or i knew the root of a sanskrit you know mm -hmm. sanskrit root or something and you would mm -hmm. you would be able to figure out the meaning of a hindi word mm -hmm. Or the gender. So in 2013, I had a paper published on grammatical gender, acquisition of grammatical gender in Hindi Urdu. And uh, uh, because the, the rule of thumb is R ending is masculine and E ending is feminine. Right. But then then that rule 60 percent time does not apply because because there are lots of type two masculine or feminine, which right. the right. word that does not end in I is still masculine and the word that does and in ends in e is not feminine like sati or hati are not feminine yogi or, or, or yogi or or and mata is mata is not you know masculine yeah so yeah. the grammatical gender wins over uh sorry um in hindi the natural gender wins over the grammatical gender but which is not the case in german in german the grammatical gender wins over the natural gender like michen if the the rule says that if the word ends in chen, then it has to be neuter. And Michen is means small girl in German, but then small girl is still neuter <laughs> in German. So in Hindi, at least, in, we we respect more of a natural gender over grammatical gender. But then, how do you acquire the gender of, uh, let's say, ghar or makan mm -hmm. or kameez, right? So uh, my suggestion um, in that paper is kind of like what French does. Like it adds a little article to make sure that la, le, le, and if it is like masculine, feminine by the right. looking at the article. Right. So I suggested to teach uh, nouns with the adjective, the mark adjective. Right. So, right. you know, um, mahingi kitab, you know, mahingi sari or mahinga ghar, mm. you know, so mahinga and mahingi, even if ghar or, or, yeah. or kameez yeah. or then you'll, then you'll remember the, yeah the, so that the, one and the, one with link the gender with the adjective yeah yeah that's a good good trick mm -hmm. um so for students though who are quite new i'm sure some of that went over their head but uh if, if, for for someone who's interested maybe in hindi um or is quite new even to all of this tell us a little bit just about the world of hindi literature and if someone were to begin the study of Hindi, what what type of um, texts and stories and poetry and films and, and what, what kind of a world would, would open up to them? Maybe you could even yeah. share with us, you know, maybe a favorite Hindi poet or author mm -hmm. and... Uh, Maybe even a maybe even a passage or a verse or so, but but tell us a little yeah. bit first just about the world of you know of of Hindi literature. Yeah, uh, 
on on onset of this i would say i am a person of linguistics and languages so literature is not my best suit but okay. you know hey we all are human and without literature literature makes us human we live in a society and we all grew up with the literature whether we listen to your music or watch movie or read novels right or um we i'm i, I have no uh, academic uh, kind of credential to analyze literature <laughs> but uh i that does not stop me loving it right so you can love without judging anything so <laughs> um growing up in india and going to school in a hindi medium school and we always be given uh, a a book which is written in hindi and we will learn the poetry and poetry recitation has happened in school teacher would say rote memorize it and in, you know still in india there is a drill and kill method you have to rote memorize the poetry and we'll go and we'll say um the poetry so one poetry from my childhood so, so let me answer the question what it the, if uh, you are a learner of hindi language what opens up um i will say couple of things on that learning a language is definitely a first step but then how if you are learning hindi because you are really interested in india uh, in in and socio cultural aspect of india and you just know the language you can speak the language and you can interact with the people around in hindi belt of hindi india but that does not really opens the inner circle of the the, the society you know people you you know as a as an anthropologist or something you can say like you cannot do the good research if you are not tapping in the inner circle and literature is one way to to have access to the inner circle so let's i'm giving you a couple of example like the if you read premchand for example or toba takes uh, so sadat hasan manto and all these literature uh this will open up or this will introduce the uh, a kind of a society that in general you will not find walking around in delhi or or hindi speaking belt right uh that ruler india or mulk raja nan untouchability uh, sort of topic is is not being projected in in a daily conversation but the literature will give you access of the everyday society 100 years ago and and that builds a sort of cultural and social understanding the social fabric of the target community that the language that you are learning so and and the vocabulary that people have forgotten i mean i can guarantee you that many hindi native speaker of my age or like younger of my age would not know the word dheki and it's a hindi word that even the dictionary does not have it wow, but we use say, it what, what does it mean It, it's a, it's a it, it's it's not it doesn't mean anything. It's a machine that we use in to get the husk out of the paddy to to get the rice out of that cover. <laughs> okay. And, and it's like okli, but it's a longer wood thing. But then you read that literature, and and then you get introduced to that everyday life. So I think the by reading a literature or any literature, right? I I read. to kill a mocking bird <laughs> in my first year of american experience and i did not understand anything but then i read it second time and had a american friend and i said why this you guys have to read this in a school and and that person explained things to me and now everything comes in perspective right so so that the literature just reading i read it for the language purpose right i'm reading english novel but right. then when when my friend explained things the layers of social fabric of america pro- portrays in to kill a mocking bird by harper lee it it n- now i see america in a different different lenses so the literature will give you a different lenses to to learn more about the society or the country or the landscape or the people those who are really you are really interested in and hence you are learning sanskrit or hindi or the language of that community so uh, for me hindi literature was just introduced as as a everyday indian <laughs> uh, and uh, i would wrote memorize and one of my childhood po- four lines that i still remember by subhadra kumari chauhan uh, ye kadam ka ped it's a kadam i don't know what's the english word for kadam it's some sort of ped it's a tree okay. and uh, the idea is that lord krishna would uh, jump on a on a 
on on a on a tree and played the flute basri and and this childhood is talking to a mother a very young child is talking to his mother or her mother and saying ye kadam ka ped agar ma hota yamuna tire tir ka matlab hai kinara like the bank of so if this kadam ka ped if this happened to be the near the river yamuna main bhi us par baith kanhaiya banta dheere dheere wait so uh, le deti yadi mujhe basri तुम दो पैसे वाली किसी तरह नीची हो जाती ये कदम की डाली राइट तो कदम का पेड़ एंड एंड द चाइल्ड द चाइल्ड इज विसिंग दैट आई कैन बी लॉर्ड कृष्ण आई कैन बी लाइक बिकॉज द वेन यू आर ग्रोइंग अप यू आर सींग द बाल लीला ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्ण और राम इन दैट फैमिली एंड हाउ फनी दे आर ईटिंग स्टीलिंग मक्खन और बटर एंड प्लेइंग फ्लूट एंड एवरीबडी लव्स दैम सो द चाइल्ड आई वॉन्ट टू बिकम दैट that lord krishna but the kadam ka ped that the branches are higher up so somehow this branches would come down and i'll sit on that and i'll play, play fluet if you buy me the two paise wali the <laughs> basuri so so those childhood i i remember going around my mother and say ye kadam ka ped agar ma hota yamuna tire main bhi us par baith kanhaiya banta dheere dheere agar le deti mujhe tum 200 rupaye wali cycle मैं भी उस पे चला चला के कन्हैया बन यू नो सो लाइक आई वाज इन स्टेट ऑफ फ्लूड दैट पोएम सेज आई वुड ऐड व्हाट आई वांट फ्रॉम माय मदर लाइक अ साइकल और और सम मिठाई यू नो सम स्वीट्स और सम गिफ्ट्स सम सम न्यू क्लोथ्स सो आई वुड रिप्लेस द वर्ड फ्लूड विद ऑल माय डिमांड्स सो द देन आई ग्रो अप एंड you know when you go to college you are adult enough but you are नॉट श्योर लाइक व्हिच पार्ट आई हैव टू टेक यू नो दैट time at the teenage when you think you are smarter than your parents but you still don't know which path i have to go or which path i have to take and the literature has been guiding the literature has been a real guide in in terms mm. of my non academic life how do i conduct myself what the world is like the literature has the philosophy behind the literature or the literary work really helps you to think critically so i read hari vans rab bachan the this this poem i'll just recite a, a paragraph it it the title of the poem is purv chalne ke ke bato hi baat ki pehchan kar so before you follow a path analyze your path it goes like this purv chalne ke bato hi baat ki pehchan kar le pustakon mein hai nahi chhapi gayi iski kahani hal iska gyat hota hai na aur ki zubani anginat rahi gaye इस राह से उनका पता नहीं पर गए कुछ लोग इस पर छोड़ पैरों की निशानी ये निशानी मुख होकर भी बहुत कुछ बोलती है खोल इसका अर्थ पंथ ही पंथ का अनुमान कर ले पूर्व चलने के बटो ही बाट की पहचान कर ले राइट सो बिफोर यू मूव ऑन यू यू एम्बार्क ऑन योर जर्नी और यू हैव टू डिसाइड इन योर लाइफ वट शुड आई डू इन दिस गिवेन सिचुएशन and you you don't know and people kind of just follow everyone's path like oh every, you are seth is doing this so i should be doing this too you know <laughs> so that that kind of helps you to learn like okay hari wants to have bachan is asking us to uh, me to stop stop and think and analyze and and see what are the things uh, foresee the future in in a way that what you are thinking walking on this way what's your goal in life is this the perfect way to re- achieve your goals so like in that period of your life when you are constructing your own identity uh, you are far you have fallen up far from your family you are your own person but you have not made your personality <laughs> strong enough to be identify in a society so these are the poetry that helps um, help me at least in pers- personally to create myself and then then you you read someone something again from uh, hari vansh rai vachan that dharm granth sab jala chuki hai jiske antar ki jwala mandir masjid girje sab ko tod chuka jo matwala pandit momin padri padriyon ke phando ko jo kaat chuka kar sakti hai aaj usi ka swagat meri madhusala so that's this four line from madhusala 
and when i see in the current world that people are fighting based on religion i'm hindu you are muslim i'm christian i'm sikh you are urdu speaker you i'm a hindi teacher <laughs> and 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 then i see hari vansh rai bachchan saying the dharm granth sab jala chuki hai jiske antar ki jwala all the scriptures have been burnt right uh, mandir masjid girje sabko tod chuka jo matwala so the matwala who has just broken all that there is no temple there no mosque no church pandit momin padriyon ke phandon ko jo kaat chuka kar sakti hai aaj usi ka swagat meri madhusala so if the life is your madhusala and you get rid of all this identity hindu muslim christian you have seen you you are not kind of being molded by these things you are molded by the good works and a, and and a, and a good deeds if if that's something to teach in a current uh, world that i want to identify with then then it's it's a one way of philosophy to think about it does not i it it does not have to say like if you are hindu then it's not good if you are hindu that should be your choice if you are christian it's your choice but let's not judge each other based on your identity of for from that sector right so as a human um and and i feel like this kind of poetry has has uh, given me a lot food for thought and in some time in a free time i think um and i see like what i want to be you know uh, so literature uh, or at least a hindi literature that i'm aware of and i would add more urdu literature because the reason i learned urdu script and because i wanted to read uh in the original text <laughs> uh, uh, i wanted to read ghalib like when he mm-hmm. said um hame um hame malum hai jannat ki haqeeqat lekin dil ko khush rakhne ko ghalib ye khayal acha hai he is not saying that jannat exists or does not exist he lets the listener decide if you think that jannat exists good for you if you think that it does not exist then it's good for you but to keep your heart happy it's a good thought mm. so so these authors are very cleverly not aligning towards x or y they let the readers you know hang in middle and you decide for yourself mm. <laughs> so they are not going to decide for you but it's enough food for thought to to so the literature does that to me as as a non literary person i'm sure that there are better scholar than uh, mm-hmm. of literature who will talk more about this but this is my two cents for the literature in hindi wow wow bahut sundar shukriya yeah, we, we read a little ghalib uh, at harvard and uh, it's, <laughs> it's beautiful it's just yeah. beautiful and but you have to be very highly educated in that genre to understand all of the different metaphors and things that are really being used but mm-hmm. the ability to play with the language in yeah. in that ambiguity it's really remarkable uh, what so what you can do with the language at a very high level is yeah. is wonderful i i don't remember the sh- exact sh- uh, share of ghalib sahab but oh, it's it's uh, you know like we don't have data but we have anec data somebody said to, uh, reported or we were talking and and somebody said like once a ghalib was asked because he would not go to mosque or anything mm. uh he was not practitioner in that way but somebody asked like how many uh, roza that's the everyday fasting that our muslim brothers and sisters do and so somebody asked him like kind of trying to target him like how many roza did you have ghalib sahab and his answer was such that it can mean both that i did not leave anything meaning i did all the roza or i did not nothing like i i didn't do any roza so okay. and then the then the person who asked question has to sit on what do you mean <laughs> so that was that was ghalib you know we cannot be ghalib yeah yeah so that gives us a beautiful taste um some of the masala the flavor of the literature uh but of course you know the other unique or the, the the other major element of studying hindi you already touched on this is the spoken and oral dimensions of this language mm-hmm. and uh this is also a key difference in the way that sanskrit classical sanskrit is studied and and taught uh where it's really more on the grammar and reading um and translation whereas with hindi we're really going to learn how to speak and communicate in the modern living language mm-hmm. so thinking about our upcoming course series of courses at yogic studies and in particular thinking about 
it in this online environment, Hindi on Zoom, mm-hmm. Zoom Mang. Yes. Uh, talk a little bit about you know, you know this this spoken oral dimension of Hindi. What makes that special? Uh, and and maybe even thinking about like what are how are we going to uh, work with that in this Zoom environment so that people will actually come away from this class not just being able to read and yeah. being able to enter that literary world but actually to be able to speak and if they go to India to be able to communicate uh, in in spoken Hindi. Yeah. Um, so uh, that. Our plan, as as we made our plan, so I'm <laughs> yes. gonna talk a little bit our plan set, and and you help me. So credit goes to you to create this uh, platform and and help me to figure out the whole planning and and meeting with our Sanskrit teacher was amazing and learn more from her and her experience. Uh, as a language teacher uh, and especially for Zoom classes, I feel that I still wanna keep the full package. <laughs> you know, so it's not like, oh, just because you're online, so the writing is not going to happen or reading is not going to happen. It's just going to be the conversation or grammar or vocabulary. I want to tap on all the five skills, reading, writing, listening, speaking, and culture. And uh, in, in the semester, uh, 12 weeks of semester or uh, that we planned, uh, three semester for a long year, um, I I want to have classes which will in in one hour 30 minutes time we have a little bit of element of everything uh and in because so you don't feel that you are missing something in particular however as the as we will learn from a student about their requirements and their need i'm okay to change the the kind of class structure focus more on one skill on one day and the other skill on the other day of course, the script is going to take a cup, uh, maybe three, four weeks time for everybody. But then the communication does not is not the slave of script. It can be written in in Roman script to to kind of learn oral tradition. We can bring back the India's oral tradition in class, and we learn orally, and uh, we'll practice a basic conversation to begin with. Uh, first, all about me or I, mm-hmm. uh, my, mine. Mm-hmm. And then going to the you, yours, and and then going to the third person, he, she, and they, and and that's kind of once you have a langu- linguistic ability to talk about third person in the target or in a foreign language, then we consider like wow, you get it, you know, because people always talk about me, 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 my, my, me, 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 my teacher used to say like, why you are sounding like a goat? You say ma 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 all the time, you know. Um, so uh, in in class that I we structured, we'll have a, a little bit of a script we, to begin with, but every day in a class we'll have a regular conversation. For example, we can begin with the basic introduction. We can add two questions every day in a class, and what are the typical questions that you can connect with the native speaker and they generally ask for example aapka naam kya hai and and i'm you know like let me give you an example of english like in english when i was a student or learning english 101 i i asked how are you and the expected answer is i'm fine thank you and and uh, how are you and then the expected answer is i'm fine thank you mm-hmm. you know but this is not real in America, if you say, hey, how are you? And that person would not even say anything. They'll say hi back and then move on. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I'm not... Uh, in, in, yeah, in an in a online uh, platform where you are not going to receive a university degree, what you want is the hands-on, what's what's actual Hindi is being practiced in in the in the spoken community. Right? So, aap um, kaise uh, can also be said, Kya hal hai? Um, or uh, khana khaya, that's the another way. Have you had food? Is the another way of asking how are you? You know, so um, those are the very practical conversational stuff that you can you can hear or you can use everyday life. But then also uh, understanding the the thematic vocabulary. So let's say we are talking about your room. So what all happens in a room? And so everybody will have the ident- like the items from their room that they can personalize the vocabulary. We all are learning the vocabulary that 
in the room, but I don't have to make list necessarily. Everybody can bring the item from their room that they want to learn, and I'll introduce to one structure. So, for example, ye kalam hai, right? Ye is this, kalam is pen, and hai is the verb. So, the word order in Hindi is unlike English. It's mm. subject, then object, and then verb. Ye, pen, hai. Ye is this, pen is. Ye, pen, hai. And now if our student will show like whatever books or, or a water bottle or computer or iPad, and then they can practice the sentence, ye computer hai, mm. ye iPad hai, ye pencil hai. Now you are speaking Hindi. Basically, you are speaking Hindi. Now you have only thing to learn is that Hindi word for those pencil and 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 pull down like the flower vase or book, a kitab. Right. So, so these these pattern is giving you the syntax, the bones, but then the flesh that as much as you wanna be mota in your Hindi, as fat you want to be in a Hindi language, that much vocabulary you learn, but you basically personalize the vocabulary in your ways. Um, so, uh, my goal is always to kind of make the language general enough that everybody gets the benefit but also opportunity to personalize for individuals learner maybe i'm lucky because i always have like um, a few number of students not like 200 students in a class but uh, it might but but i think our plan is such that even if there are 200 students we can still have an opportunity to uh, personalize it so every day class might begin with just a little bit of a conversation practice, what I call Hindi yoga. Mm -hmm. So we do a Hindi yoga in the 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You have a conversation to practice and then you can go around in a different Zoom room or breakout room and mm -hmm. practice. And then we, we add another new learning and then we practice all together. And then we can talk a little bit about the structure of the Hindi some few vocabularies, a little bit practice, but basically task. Like, okay, with if you learn, my name is Rajiv in Hindi, my name Rajiv hai, what can you do with this, uh, with knowledge? Uh, so everything that we will learn will make it to use, not just the knowledge, but the actual functionality or like how can we use this in a day to day's life that that information rather than oh i have a very good notes of hindi grammar now that that is not gonna help that is not gonna happen in this course um, <clears throat> yeah uh, just to fill in a, a little bit more on what rajiv ji is is saying for students who are interested in in the structure of the course there each week you'll receive uh pre-recorded lectures uh, that correspond with the textbook and the sections of the textbook that uh, you'll be studying for that week. There's interactive material with the textbook, vocab, quizzes, fill in the blanks, and things like that. So you prepare on your own time the material for that week, and then we'll you'll show up on Zoom, you'll meet twice a week for two 90-minute sessions, and those will be really tailored to the students in all of these different ways that that Rajiv Ji is, is is speaking about, so that you'll get the foundational structure, but then you'll also be able to tailor it and personalize it, and ask questions and go through you know examples and review more complex things uh, in person together. Yeah. Uh, they'll also and thanks be, for clarifying that, Sedji. I <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Um, because the combination, I think, then of asynchronous and synchronous learning, I think, is really the best in that way. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, there's going to be a community forum, which will be very active and uh, you know, to interact with your fellow students, your cohorts, and to ask questions of Rajiji. He'll bring questions in from there into the, the live session. So even if you can't make it live... For those those Zoom classes, you you can still get your questions in. You can still interact and and participate live with with the class, even if you can't be there on those those exact sessions, because the recordings will be available and up very shortly after um, the the class sessions are finished. 
Uh, there's a midterm, there's a final, but don't worry about that. It'll be very fun just to, just to apply, as Rajivji said, to apply what you've learned you know, into your life, give you an opportunity to, to cement your learning. Um, and uh, I think the, the best part about these language courses, though, in addition to just getting to work with Rajiv G here, is getting to interact with an incredible community of students from truly from all over the world. There'll be breakout sessions, but we'll also encourage study groups to form. And uh, in the first week or two, we'll put out an invitation for you to create study groups, and those can be based on region, time zone. Uh, we've done this with the Sanskrit uh, courses, and it's turned out to be one of the best things because real friendships have grown out of these study groups. Uh, and people are, are meeting, honestly, almost every day around the world, people are meeting in some yogic studies study group and studying these languages together. So we want to create that for Hindi as well and uh, you know, really make it dynamic and shared and, and communal in that way. So... So, yeah, I think that's uh, a good place to kind of end here. Uh, the course begins, so Hindi 101, the first term, is going to begin uh, May 23rd. Um, is that right? Uh, yes, May 23rd through August 12th is the first term. Uh, enrollment uh, is open right now. You can go to yogicstudies.com forward slash Hindi dash 101. There'll also be uh, a link uh, in the show notes or here on YouTube. Um, Rajiv Ji, any, any final words or, or anything else that we didn't get to touch on today that uh, you'd like to end with? No, I think um, we, uh, thanks for, uh, if one more thing I can add to the structure of this course that I think the student will, will love is it would be very well defined what are the things to do so you do not have to guess. I'll make a video for each week, like things to do and where you would get this information and these notes and, and what is expectation. So the goals and expectations are going to be clearly mentioned. And uh, and as Sethji said, there is an in-person meeting uh, and another, like any questions can be put forward and I would love to address those questions um, at any time. Yeah, and so, if you're, if you're yeah. watching this on YouTube, feel free to drop a comment or, or a like here below. We're happy to interact here. Reach out at info at yogicstudies.com with more you know, administrative questions and, and so forth. But uh, if you've made it this far in this conversation and you're interested, uh, we really hope uh, you'll consider joining us for Elementary Hindi uh, this summer with uh, Dr. Rajiv Ranjan. Rajiv Ji, thank you so much, Dhanyavad, for your time. Uh, this has been wonderful to get to know you more and to hear more about your research and teaching. And uh, we, we can't wait uh, for this first term of Hindi. Thank you, Seth Ji, for giving me opportunity to interact with our friends and potential students. And I'm excited to meet new friends on this platform and, uh, uh, and learn from all of you, too. Wonderful. All right. Well, well uh, please uh, take care and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see everyone again soon.